In this video, we will talk about three points on how private equity boards, boards of companies backed by private equity firms, differ from public boards. Just to clarify, we are referring to a formal board of directors, not an informal advisory board. Board of directors have a formal relationship with the company where they have a duty of loyalty to act in the best interests of the company and its shareholders. The three points of difference between private equity and public boards that we will talk about are alignment of interests, strategic leadership, and discipline. Now, before we get started, if you enjoy this content and would like to see more, please make sure to click the like and subscribe buttons and click the link in the description below for a one page summary of this video. So let's get started by going over alignment of interests. Private equity board members usually own a higher percentage of the company in comparison to public company board members. This is a strong driver for increased engagement of the board members. Also, because the private equity board members have a substantial amount of skin in the game, the board members and senior management of the company, which also should have a substantial amount of skin in the game, are more aligned when it comes to the future goals of the company. Because of these factors, private equity board members are usually more focused and are more involved in the company. How are they more involved, you may ask? Well, let's see by moving on to our next point, which is strategic leadership. Private equity firms conduct detailed due diligence on a company before they make an offer. They conduct commercial due diligence, financial due diligence, management due diligence, legal due diligence, and more. In addition to conducting all of the due diligence on past and current information before the transaction is complete, the private equity firm will identify future value creation opportunities for the business. So by the time the private equity firm purchases the company and has representation on the company's board, there is a detailed plan to implement the future value creation strategies. Now, while plans may take different forms in private equity, there is a common term called the 100-day plan, which, just as it sounds like, is a detailed plan for the first 100 days. The 100-day plan should do a great job to balance the initiatives for short-term cash generation with the long-term value creation opportunities. In addition to stating the value creation opportunities, the plan will prioritize them as well as define clear strategic direction for the company. Now, once this is set up, the company still needs the discipline to execute the plan. And for this, let's move on to discipline. After agreeing on a clear strategy that creates value for a company, because of the increased involvement of private equity firms, private equity board members may also help set up a system for execution that may help with accountability at the company. The system will help create specific time-bounded goals for teams and individuals at a company that directly align with the value creation strategies that have been developed. For example, the famous venture capitalist John Doerr brought a goal-setting system called OKRs to many firms, including Google. John originally learned the system from the CEO of Intel, Andy Grove. The O in OKRs stands for objectives, and the KRs stand for key results. It's a fairly simple concept. The individual or team sets one main objective, the thing that the individual or team is setting out to do, and will accomplish this objective by tracking key results along the way. Key results being the measurable benchmarks that show progress. Now, here at Mink Learning, we have our own goal setting system and we teach investors how to use the goal setting system and implement its principles so that investors are better prepared when they serve on private company boards. 
If you're interested in learning more, please let us know. Now let's move on to our final thought. While public company boards can learn a lot from private equity boards when it comes to strategic leadership and discipline, private equity boards can also learn from public company boards. Because of the nature of the public markets, public company boards have a large focus on governance. While private companies are private by nature, one can argue that some private equity boards can improve their governance. Also, quite a few public company boards have been proactively trying to increase the diversity of their board members. It's very important to have many different perspectives in the boardroom to ensure that ideas are challenged and potential problems can be proactively discovered. Sometimes, because of the large concentration of similar investors on a private company board, groupthink may occur. But overall, I believe that public company boards can learn a lot from private equity boards, the board of directors of private companies backed by private equity firms. In this video, we talked about three points on how private equity boards differ from public company boards. We talked about alignment of interests, strategic leadership, and discipline. If you can think of any other points of difference between private equity and public boards, or have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, please click the like and subscribe buttons. And in the description below, you'll find links to a free one-page resource, our website, and our LinkedIn page, where you can find more information on this topic and other private equity topics. Thanks, and we'll see you in our next video.